Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. The Ministry of Public Works on Tuesday awarded some $2.6 billion in contracts for road and water transportation development. At the contract signing ceremony held at the ministry's Kingston office, Minister Bishop Juan Edgel gave a breakdown of the funds being spent. This afternoon's contract signing will see us signing a total of $2 billion, $687 million, $353,700 worth of contracts. And these contracts will be in the various sectors as it relates to various programs. Uh, miscellaneous roads, which are our community roads, will be signing in this phase $1,163,692,208. In our urban roads program, which are roads that are done within the townships, 562 million. $297,396. In the Demerara Harbor Bridge, where we have ongoing work, we are signing a contract for $320,283,632 for 24 regular pontoons and four large pontoons. In the transport, and Harbors Department, we're signing a total of four hundred fifty-seven million nine hundred thousand five hundred sixty-one dollars, and that will be for the acquisition of spears, as well as for the docking of the MV Sabanto and the NV Kano One, better known as the Chinese ferries. Meanwhile, Minister within the Ministry, Diarat Indar noted that government has constructed a number of roads since taking office in August 2020, with several others slated for this year. This budget for public works this year for this miscellaneous and urban roads program is $15.2 billion. It's the biggest we have ever had. A number of roads are going to be, you know, going to be constructed. Some of them are going to be signed today, but much more. This is only a small part of it. More is going to be coming. Over the past two years, since we've been in government, we have done a lot of roads. I just want to come to the roads part for us. A lot of roads. This year, it's going to be even more. Between ourselves at Public Works, local government ministry, as well as housing ministry. The ministry has awarded 37 contracts for miscellaneous road works in regions 2, 5, and 6. Of that number, 17 are first-time contractors. In addition, 16 contractors have been awarded contracts for urban road development in regions 2, 4, 6, 7, 9, and 10. The National Media Conference and a Symposium, held in commemoration of World Press Freedom Day, was officially launched on Tuesday at the Arthur Chung Conference Center with hundreds of media practitioners and the journalists in attendance. Delivering the feature address at the opening ceremony, President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali reaffirmed his government's position on freedom of the press. He also urged the media operatives to be responsible, fair, objective, and respectful of the rule of law. President Ali also responded to GPA President Nazim Ragabir's call for his administration not to use spyware. The president made it clear that his government has no intention of using modern technology, such as spyware, to monitor the activities of journalists or citizens. Meanwhile, government has partnered with the world-leading learning virtual platform, Coursera, to provide high-level training for journalists here and in the diaspora. Guyana's first ever Media and Communication Academy logo was unveiled by Minister within the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, Kwame McCoy, during the event. Through this collaboration, every single media practitioner 
at every level of the media spectrum here in Guyana and in the diaspora will have access on an annual basis to learning licenses paid for by the government of Guyana. Those licenses will allow you to pursue and pursue selections from among more than 2,000 world-class courses at various levels of certification from leading partner universities in the world, including the Ivy League institutions. Since the administration assumed the office, it has re-established and strengthened the communication and access channels between government and the media. The approach was facilitated through engagements with representatives of the fraternity. The Ministry of Education is contemplating extending the school term into the July-August holiday to facilitate a program to bring children up to speed with their usual syllabus after the Ministry discovered many cases of learning loss among the nursery school level. Education Minister Priya Manik Chan noted Tuesday morning after visiting several schools in Georgetown. She said facilities are physically ready to accommodate students. However, it is evident students have suffered a learning loss due to the pandemic. We really have to find, and I don't think people fully appreciate uh, what two years of school closure has done. We have to find ways to make sure um, these children get exposed to the hours of education they need, that we have parents who are interested and the attitudes are right. We may have to work into July, August. How we do that would have to, would it be dependent on who is willing to work and all of that. But, um, you know, that's, that's very worrying. Minister Manichan said the ministry will continue to monitor students' academic progress to make adjustments where necessary to ensure the learning process is smooth and efficient. We've consolidated the curriculum to be able to make it um, have, have students get exposed a year before. So that when we used to have 40 weeks of learning in any year, we've consolidated it into 20 weeks. So you were expected, a teacher is expected to teach the 20 weeks of the year before, the grade before. So let's take a grade four student. The first 20 weeks of the term should be, of the school year, should be uh, exposure to the grade three work and once they've gotten that and mastered that we move into grade four work. I truly hope that's happening across levels now it, it, it requires us to monitor and implement because that those changes are absolutely necessary if we're not to be suffering from the effects of COVID five years from now but what I have seen academically is worrying and parents need to um, pay attention to what we're asking of them so that they can make sure their children are benefiting from um, the kind of accelerated learning that we need at this stage. The 22nd Pushpanjali was held on May 5 at the Indian Arrival Monument Gardens in observance of the 184th anniversary of East Indian indentured laborers to Guyana. The event saw colorful and energetic performances by the Saraswati Dance Academy and the Kandia Dance Troupe, among others. <laughs> Speaking at the event, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips noted that East Indians since arriving in Guyana 184 years ago have made tremendous contributions to the country's development. 
as we look at every aspect of our society, we can see landmark contributions from persons of Indian descent throughout our history in the areas of business, the arts, education, agriculture, and health sectors, our culture, our sports. The definition of who we are as a people and as a country cannot be made without the influence and the input of our Indian brothers and sisters. The Prime Minister said the struggles of indentured laborers must be remembered and the lessons learned must be appreciated. He encouraged the continuity of traditions passing down to future generations. Over 7,000 households in Providence and the surrounding East Bank Damarara communities will soon benefit from the $130 million water distribution system that is underway in the area. On Wednesday, Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll inspected works at the site in Providence. He said that the well will be fully functional in a month's time. Physical drilling is complete and now you have to do the other connection and for the transmission lines, etc. So for persons within, the, especially Providence and the Petersall areas, they will be happy to know that by we're hoping to complete within a month um, this new well. Yeah. Um, which will include the transmission lines yes. and every other connection that goes with it. The project is being executed by S. Chagmohan Construction and General Supplies, Inc. The scope of works include drilling of a 638-meter well, construction of a pump house, installation of pipe discharge, and the installation of transmission main. In March, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali commissioned a $141 million well at Lusignan East Coast Damarara, benefiting some 22,000 residents of Lusignan and its surrounding communities. Since taking office in August 2020, government has invested more than $6.2 billion in the water sector. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms. Goodbye.